Okay, this video is to discuss how to do the DC mesh equations tutorial um, level one. So here we are on the main menu. Um, we'll click on DC mesh equations. Um, again, there is no pretest or uh, introductory tutorial just as yet, although we will add that um, sometime probably in the near future. So the first thing to do is probably to look at an example. So we can do that. And now remember that mesh analysis, unlike nodal analysis, is based on Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, not based on KCL. So we've actually defined two mesh currents for these two interior meshes. Um, we've actually selected, although we didn't say it here, we're actually selecting the outer mesh, which is the one that goes around here. We've chosen that to be our reference current and set it to be equal to zero. That's why that uh, current going counterclockwise around the outside doesn't appear because that's actually a mesh too. It's called the outer mesh. But here that's chosen to be zero. So we just define the inner mesh currents I1 and I2. This is a two mesh circuit in that sense, not counting the outer mesh, which would be actually the third mesh. And in this case, we have no uh, current sources. So we just are basically writing KVL equations. So these are color coded for us in the example. Um, and we're adding the voltage drops going in a clockwise path that's outlined by this dashed red the loop there. Um, and so that's a drop, then there's a drop here, and then there's a drop here to get back to where we started. And so each of those terms then is color coded to match the voltage drop that's labeled on the diagram. And they're expressed here, and that's the KVL equation. And then we can also highlight the other KVL equation um, after we click next there. Um, and again, now it's showing the voltage drops on this mesh and highlighting those terms. If you want a detailed explanation of any or all of these KVL equations, you just click this button and it'll give you a much more detailed explanation of that. Okay, and then finally, um, it just shows us the original problem. Now also, there are two SOT variables here, a SOT voltage and a SOT current. Um, and those are basically, uh, for the voltage, we just use an Ohm's law type of thing. Um, that's the voltage across this 9 ohm resistor. Um, and then for the SOT current, here that's actually going to be a difference of mesh currents. So remember that a mesh current is just a fictitious current. Um, every branch current is actually a difference of mesh currents. Now, the outer mesh current we're defining to be zero. So the current through the 5 ohm doesn't appear to be a difference, but it actually is. It's just um, I2 minus, uh, if you want the current going to the right, it would be I2 minus zero. So that's the same as I2. Um, but the current going through here, for example, going down through this element would be I1, which goes down and I2, which goes up. So these mesh currents are defined in a way that we have the right number of variables after we've picked our reference mesh, but they're not actual currents through a branch. In fact, we could add any number to all these mesh currents and we would still have all the branch currents being the same. We'd have to add that also then to the reference mesh, which we've chosen to be zero. So um, we might not want to actually do that, but you could. And uh, the values of those mesh currents are actually not important. What's important is their differences, which are the branch currents through each circuit element. Okay, so let's work a problem now at the easy level. And it'll give you some instructions at the beginning, which you can read if you have any confusion about the interface or how to enter things there. And you can look at that at any time by clicking on the help button. Um, now, um, since it's required to be mesh analysis here, you don't get to choose the analysis method, but we do get to choose the type of equation we need to write. And in this case, the only types of equations we need to do are the SOT variable equations and the KVL equations. KVL almost always needs to be done for mesh uh, analysis unless you have, um, well, unless you have a lot of current sources that constrain all of those uh, uh, currents. Okay, so let's do it, for example, for the SOT voltage first. That's the simplest type of equation. So let's get that out of the way before we make too many mistakes. So V naught equals um, what? So now we want the voltage here. We need the current basically using the passive sign convention going up through the one ohm resistor because that then the current will enter the positive uh, side of V naught, which is the passive sign convention that has the plus sign in Ohm's law. So the current going up there, well, I2 goes up. I1 actually goes down through that. So the, the uh, current is actually gonna be I2 minus I1. So it's gonna be a difference in mesh currents. Uh, sorry, I2 minus I1. 
and then times the one up. So that will be the equation for V naught. And we need to do another SOT variable equation for that current. So we have to pick a SOT branch current. And now it's going to be I naught equals to what? Well, I naught is basically flowing opposite to I2. And the only other current that flows through the resistor is the reference mesh current, which we've set to zero. So um, basically, I2 is just going to be the negative of I naught here. So we put a minus sign in there because they have opposite directions. And then um, that's going to be I2. So check that. And now we're done with the SOT variable equation. So now we have a couple of KVL equations to write one for each mesh here. So we'll select KVL equations. And it's going to warn us that we need to have a separate term for each voltage source. If we had two voltage sources in series, for example, we would not want to uh, combine those into a single term. Now that won't typically happen, but there may be some cases where you need to be careful about that. OK, so um, let's write it for mesh number one first. So let's start here at the lower left and we'll add the first voltage is going to be that of a voltage source. So that'll just be a simple voltage. Then we're going to have a voltage across a resistor that has two mesh currents. So that would be this type of term. And indeed, if you hover over that, it'll tell you that's a voltage drop across a resistor with two mesh currents. And then this one has only one uh, non-reference mesh current. So that would be this type of term. And that must sum to zero. So we're going to add voltage drops as we go clockwise in the direction of I1. That's really what I think is the most convenient thing to do. You could also add voltage rises if you like, but it's probably easier. You have fewer minus signs if you add the drops. So um, especially since we've chosen this to go clockwise like this. So um, the first uh, drop, well, this is actually a rise because we're going from uh, a lower voltage to a higher voltage. So that would actually be a negative one ohm. We can put the minus sign there, or we could put it in this other text box alternatively, but not both places, of course. Um, and then here we need the current. Um, we want the voltage with a plus and minus sign. Now, don't let that V naught confuse you because we're not calculating V naught right now. We're calculating a voltage drop as we go clockwise. So the plus sign should actually be up here, and the minus sign should actually be down there. It's opposite of what V naught is labeled, and that's just because that's the way V naught was defined, which has nothing to do with what we're doing now. So we need um, basically the current going in there is I1. And then the current uh, that's going the opposite direction is I2. So that's going to be the one <clears throat> that has the minus sign. And then that difference in currents, which is the net current going down here, that gets multiplied by the 1 ohm to give us the voltage drop going from here down to here. And then the final voltage drop will be from here to here. And that's just given by I1 times 5 ohms. Notice that we're using the passive sign convention wherever possible for the passive elements. That's just the easiest thing to do. It gives us the fewest minus signs typically. Now notice that there is a systematic form in that if we're writing a, an equation for uh, mesh 1, all of the terms involving I1 then are going to be positive and the term involving the other meshes will be negative. So in this case it's just I2. And that's a systematic form. If you always take your mesh currents to go in the same direction, which I do recommend, um, then you'll have that systematic way of checking your signs right away instead of having to guess whether or not you got them correct. So we'll check that equation. That was correct. And now we have to write a mesh or a KVL equation rather for mesh two. So we're going to have, let's start here. So we have a difference of mesh currents times the resistance. We have a fixed voltage. And then finally, a uh, resistor with a single non-reference mesh current through it. So now we're going in the clockwise direction, in the direction of I2. And so that's now con actually consistent with the V-naught signs. But again, those signs have nothing to do with what we're doing, because we're just adding voltage drop going clockwise. So this will be our plus sign. This will be our minus sign. So the current going into the positive side will be I2. So that's going to be the side that's positive. And then I1 will be going the opposite direction, because it's going down through this element. So that gets subtracted, and then that difference multiplies 1 ohm to get the voltage drop going again in the up direction. Then the voltage drop going to the right here, that's actually a voltage rise of 6 volts. So we have to subtract 6 volts there, because a drop is the negative of a rise, and a rise is the negative of a drop, if you think about it. And finally, the last voltage drop going through the 7 ohm resistor is just I2, the only current that's not a reference current through that. 
times uh, 7 ohms. And um, that will, again, have a plus sign over here and a minus sign here is what we can imagine. And all of that has to be equal to 0. So that would be our equation. Remember, you have to have an equal sign to make an equation. If you don't have an equal sign, it's not an equation. It obviously will not be correct. OK, so we've written all the required equations. So now we just say no more equations. And we can view a detailed explanation if we wish. And now it's going to actually show you those plus and minus signs visually here and the loop that you drew the equation around and for each of those meshes. So that might help you check that you, know, you didn't have to guess, for example. OK, so that would be the first level. And thank you very much.